So the next classification of berm we want to look at are the full thickness or the third degree injuries. So burns full thickness or third degree. Now in these burns all the thickness of the skin is lost. So as we know we have the top of the skin the epidermis and the dermis so the dermis here the epidermis here and we have hypodermis below here the subcutaneous tissues below the skin now in a full thickness burn all the thickness of the skin is lost. So all of this is lost, the totality of the skin, all of the epidermis, all of the dermis, all lost. They are full thickness burns. So clearly the most serious sort we've looked at so far because more tissue is lost. So these are burns which extend to the subcutaneous layer all the way down to the subcutaneous layer. And they have a significant infection risk. As we've discussed with the partial thickness injuries, infection is a big risk with burns. And the appearance of these can be variable. Um, very often they can look white especially initially, depending on what caused them actually. Other times they're charred. I mean, if it's pure heat, there's nothing to blacken it really. Um, very often they just look like a dead, waxy sheet of tissue, dead tissue. But they can appear black and charred. Sometimes this waxy appearance and they can kind of look like leathery, like old leather. So different appearances. And you can probably work out by now that, as we've said many times so far, skin, epidermis, dermis, the blood vessels are in the dermis. Arterial capillaries, venules, but all those are burnt away. This no longer exists in the burnt areas. So there's going to be no blanching. So when you press, you don't get any reperfusion because that reperfusion you're seeing is coming from the vasculature in the dermis and the dermis is gone. So we're not going to get um, the blanching. So no blanching. Indicating full thickness injury. Now, as well as that, the nociceptors, as we've seen several times, are all in the dermis and they're all lost. So again, when you put a sharp pin, when you prick the bone with a sharp pin, there's no nociceptors to feel the sharp pain. The nociceptors that were there are all burnt away. They no longer exist. But the pressure receptors some pressure receptors are very low, even in the hypodermis. So sometimes pressing with a, pricking with a sharp needle can give a, a feeling of deep pressure from preserved pressure receptors low down. And because the nociceptors are all burnt away, there's less pain. So there's less pain. But if we consider an area of tissue, if there's an acrosed area here of full thickness injury, then very often there's areas of partial thickness injury around about it, and they'll certainly be painful. So what we might notice if there's shallow partial thickness in an area here, that will feel sharp when we put a needle, put, 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 prick it with a needle, but in the middle it will feel 
just a feeling of pressure, meaning we're able to identify which parts of the burn are full thickness and which parts of the burn are partial thickness. And of course the painful areas, the, the surrounding areas with the nociceptors will be very painful. Whereas the area in the middle, the full thickness area of burn will be uh, less painful. Because the nociceptors are in the dermis, very few nociceptors in the hypodermis and the subcutaneous tissues. So less pain in the full thickness area of the wound, but um, certainly pain round about it. Healing from the wound edges. Now, if an area of full thickness, if there's an area of full thickness burn as we see here, then there's no keratinocytes to heal the wound by um, regeneration, by mitosis, they've all gone. And again, the fibroblasts which can generate new dermis or the blood vessels which can generate angioneogenesis, they're all gone, everything's gone, so we can't replicate it. It's this idea of having no rabbits in a field, you can't um, get rabbits from no rabbits and you can't get cells from no cells, so the tissue can't recover. What you can get is um, healing from the edges in. So viable tissue round about here would be viable living tissue. The area of the burn, of course, the tissue is all necrosed, it's all dead. But we can get migration of living cells into the burnt area and you can get very slow healing from the wound edges. This works okay for relatively small burns, but for big ones it's um, not really a viable modality of healing. Um, full thickness burns we get more fibrosis, more healing by scar tissue. The fibrosis means we get scar tissue. The scar tissue means we get contractures because as scars mature they, uh, they contract. So scars are actually uh, contractile, they are, they're a bit like muscles, they're contractile, they get smaller with time. And so, for example, if they're over a joint, that's going to contract and it's going to take away the nice elastic skin that we should have over a joint and replace it with rigid tissue causing uh, claw-like contractures in the hands, for example, and in other parts of the body, indeed, depending on where it is. And the other risk with uh, full thickness burns is we get coagulation necrosis. So you know blood coagulates, it clots, doesn't it? So the heat will coagulate the proteins. It will cause denaturing of the proteins. And that's what actually, so the proteins in all of this tissue are denatured and, and that kills it causing necrosis. Dead tissue necrosis. So coagulation necrosis, and that can form an S-scar. Now, what an S-scar is, is imagine there's a burn. Let's imagine this is the burn. Let's imagine this is the burned area here. Now, this represents the, the burn, this, this old cloth here. Now, this was living skin, but now it's burnt, it's coagulation necrosis, it's dead. So what you have is a whole layer of dead tissue over the surface of the viable tissue which is beneath, in this case in the hypodermis or deeper structures because the full thickness is all burned. But there's still things that bacteria like to eat in this and there's still nice warm places for bacteria to hide. So this is associated with a very high infection risk. And many plastics units will just get rid of this or just, uh, or just take it off and graft the tissue beneath. But if you don't, um, and there is no, if they get away with the infection, that will separate within two to three weeks anyway, because, because it's dead. So that's what we mean by uh, S-scars. But they're associated with a particularly high risk of infection. So in burns units, very often this tissue will be debrided down to healthy, viable, bleeding tissue beneath. So third degree burns, full thickness injury, meaning the full thickness of the skin is lost. And if we think about what that means on this diagram that we've been using from the 
pathway physiology book again. What it means is um, everything is lost. The epidermis, the dermis. So the hair follicles are lost, the sweat glands are lost, the nociceptors are lost. That's why if it heals by fibrosis, all these elements will no longer be present. There won't be generation. Now, there won't be regeneration of these elements, they'll just be scar tissue. So the tissue won't, it'll be scarred, it'll be contracted, it'll be unsightly, it'll be non-functional, it'll be non-elastic. Won't have hair, won't have sweat glands. Because all of this is, is lost. Unless it's relatively small and can heal from the outside in. So a burn of this sort of size, imagine that green bit was the burn there. If that, if that was a real size. Just compare that to part of me to get the idea if that was a real size. Then, 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 then that could heal from the inside and, and you could get regeneration there. But if larger areas are lost, then uh, skin grafting is the only option really. Um, if we don't want completely fibrosed, non-functional, poor cosmetic results, we will need uh, skin grafting at an appropriate surgical unit.